Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the April VR Games Recap. Normally, this is a weekly VR Games Recap episode, but due to the upcoming move, etc., going to do a monthly version. Some really fun and just interesting looking games in this April batch. I can't wait to see what May is going to bring. So sit back, guys, chillax, and uh, let's take a look at April's VR gaming goodness. And this first game is Eve Valkyrie Ground Rush. Now, previous installments, DLC, mission packs, all taking place in space. Obstacles like asteroids, but nothing compared to this, where the biggest obstacle yet, the ground, uh, really shakes things up, requiring you to revise your strategy and basically approach the game in a completely different way. Absolutely terrific update. This next game is Crypt Crawler from developers Crazy Bunch and Head Up Games. Love the uh, Legend of Grimrock kind of look brought to VR. Legend of Grimrock, of course, evoking the classics of old, the Eye of the Beholders and Dungeon Masters. Always loved that uh, turn and step based RPGs. The game's official announcement reads as follows. Descend into the unknown and explore the perilous depth of the sinister tombs and crypts you are thrown into. Armed with nothing but a map in your wits, find powerful weapons and wield mighty artifacts to fight off the undead remains of the warriors who have come here before you. Defend yourself against poisonous scorpions, hungry spiders, and other creatures of the dark. Just love that. And you know what? This is probably going to come out before Bard's Tale and, of course, the Mage's Tale, which is in Exile's VR version of Bard's Tale. Can't wait. I'll play that as well. But in the meantime, Crypt Crawler for both Gear VR and Rift. And this game, of course, doesn't really need mentioning title wise. It's Farpoint for the PlayStation VR, a game that PlayStation VR owners have been looking forward to for a long time. Not going to say everyone, but a huge, huge chunk of us. Now, most of us saw the game for the first time at E3 last year where they showed uh, quite a bit of the gameplay. And most of those who tried the game, you know, within the last year have gone on record to say it feels like they would imagine Starship Troopers. If that was a real experience, this captures that. That's what it would feel like. It's got a single player campaign. The kind of best estimate speculation for the length of that is about four to five hours. You can also play it cooperatively with a buddy. Uh, to me, personally, this game screams exactly that. Play it with a buddy. I think it's going to be a hell of a good time. I mean, think about that length of gameplay, right? Four to five hours. For me, anyways, that is perfect for a gaming Friday. In fact, nails it. You're going to be able to purchase this as a physical copy, digital, or as part of a bundle with the aim controller which of course is the controller that was designed for and around this game. Thankfully, we're going to be able to use that controller for other games moving forward. So definitely a peripheral uh, and bundle that I would recommend that you pick up. Now, plot lines, not really a spoiler. This game obviously borrows quite heavily from various sources. There's a little bit of Space 2001 with the whole anomaly by Jupiter. And... Some other games thrown in, of course, the aforementioned Starship Troopers being one of them. Can't wait. Next up, we've got Mortal Blitz. Now, Mortal Blitz looks pretty good. It's a very nice looking game. It is available for the Oculus Rift, PlayStation VR, and the Samsung Gear VR. Now, it is a rail shooter, so if you're really kind of sick to death of rail and wave-based, probably not for you. I've included this not because it's a fantastic game, but it looks like a good, solid, fun time. I do have an issue, though, and that's the value of this package. So you basically get... An hour of gameplay for $19.99 US, and let's just call a spade a spade, that's 20 bucks. Now, for me, 20 bucks should at least be in the three to five hour range. If it was in that range, I would absolutely have no problem with it. I'd say, look, if you're into shooters, 
uh, unless you completely hate this style of game, add it to your collection. It's a good, it's a good deal, right? $9.99, hell, even $12.99, and, and kind of in that range. But one hour, no. Hopefully, they add some content. If they can bump it up to even just three, it'd be a hell of a better deal. Thomas, I this is VR Invaders. And a lot of what I said about Mortal Blitz applies to this game as well. It's available for Rift, Vive, Sony PlayStation VR. And where I mean it applies to this is the, uh, the hour. So identical price, roughly the same amount of playtime, about an hour to complete. But those who've tried it say it is one of the better VR shooters that they've tried. So with that said, you know what? That seems to be kind of becoming the norm. Personally, though, even if it's a good shooter, I probably wait for a sale on this one. Wait for a sale price, then add it to your library. Of course, none of that applies if you are absolutely sick to death of wave shooters. I'm at that point where I'm okay as long as they're, you know, few and far in between. This next game is called Dungeon Chest, available for Rift and Gear VR. It's Dungeons and Dragons for classic chess. Now, those of you who are around in the late 80s are going to remember this. Uh, those who weren't, let me explain. Back then, a little game called Battle Chess came out, and it completely revitalized, uh, you know, the game of chess, which was always about the traditional pieces. Here comes this game and says, you know what, let's make each piece like a modern fantasy piece. Well, that's what Dungeon Chess does, only it does it with D&D &D monsters and D&D &D characters. Very, very freaking cool. Google Earth VR is one of those experiences that you let somebody who's never tried virtual reality try for their first time. I guarantee... Unless, you know, this is the most jaded, bitter, disillusioned individual in the world, they're going to walk away from Google Earth VR impressed. Anybody can jump in. You can jump anywhere in the world, your hometown, you know, where you married your partner, spouse, where you did your first vacation, where your ancestors come from, where you want to go, where you've been, you name it. Google Earth VR can take you there in a way that no other application can, period. Most of the major metropolitan areas in the world are covered by this. Same with UNESCO heritage sites. It's just an amazing, amazing experience. Family, friends, whoever, let them try this. This is Drone Fighters, available for both Rift and Vive. It's an action shooter. Different ways to play this, uh, you can do solo games, so there's roughly 18 solo games. You unlock drones and weapons as you go along, but you can also do cross-platform VR gameplay. So Vive against Oculus, and of course, uh, Touch and Vive motion controllers both supported on this. Kind of reminds me of that TV show Robot Wars, kind of the same idea except you're using drones. You can customize not just the drones, but the, you know, person behind the controls, i.e. yourself. Doesn't look too bad. Price-wise, also not too bad. Currently on sale on Steam Store for about uh, 8 bucks US. And this game from Subdream Studios is called Mega Overload. It's got a pretty unique look. It's... Uh, a little cartoony, but I love what they've done with the polygons. They've kind of got that, uh, not organic look, but if you look at the polygons that make up the robots, the guns, almost kind of circular, I guess. You know, that, that 1950s version of the future, the way they kind of had, uh, you know, semicircles and circular looks to a lot of their designs. It's kind of got that feel. Right now, it's only available on the Vive. Uh, no word yet if it's going to be supported on Rift or PlayStation VR, but it's got uh, multiplayer. The problem, like with any VR game, the multiplayer is probably going to be good at the start and then kind of wane. And I can't wait till VR has the type of numbers where, you know, good multiplayer games can sustain themselves. But check this out. Uh, 
wave-based mega overload for Vive, about $10 US. All I gotta say for this game, guys, is Rampage. And if uh, you are of the arcade generation, hell, even if you're not, you should know Rampage, which was a game about basically playing a monster and destroying buildings in a city, fighting other monsters. This is a clear tribute to that, a VR tribute. Definitely looks like a lot of fun and one I'm going to give a shot. Well, thanks for joining me, guys, for this April VR Games recap. The plan, as I mentioned in the uh, update episode, is for this to go back to a weekly show once I'm settled on the other side of the country. For now, it's a monthly episode, maybe one more monthly episode like this in about three weeks' time before it settles back to normal. Guys, thanks for joining me, and as always, cheers. <laughs>